to this week's episode of Around Kansas. I'm your co-host, Michelle Martin. Deb is in North Carolina this week, taking care of her sister, Denise, who's been feeling a little under the weather. We wish Denise a speedy recovery. Oh, by the way, girls, I've still got that bail money. I'll hang on to it in case we need it. Anyway, today, I want to share with you the history of the Tall Tale postcard because it really fits the theme of fall and the fall harvest. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, it was not uncommon to see postcards that exaggerated the bounty of the plains, whether it was gigantic jackrabbits the size of buildings, uh, ears of corn that were so huge they filled a wagon, or lots of other products that came from the Central Plains. The bounty of the plains was one of the most widely produced images. Now, during this time period, the late 19th, early 20th century, we had seen a lot of population movement out of rural America and into the cities. And boosters of small towns and rural America, especially in Nebraska and Kansas, Oklahoma and Texas, wanted to find ways to lure people back to the farms. And of course, they ran all kinds of advertisements in newspapers, magazines, to try to get people to come back and work the land. But it's really kind of interesting because a very humorous activity, the creation of the Tall Tale postcard, ended up really exaggerating and kind of pushing the idea of the bounty of the plains. We're talking about postcards that showed farmers harvesting gigantic ears of corn, cucumbers so large they had to be held on, they had to be hauled on train cars, potatoes that were bigger than wagons, wheat fields that were the height of two to three men, sugar beets that required two men to lift them into a wagon, strawberries the size of large boulders and massive gigantic onions. Now, I don't know about a lot of you, I love onions, but I hate peeling and chopping them. If you look at the onions in the postcard, I think that would need more than a huge box of Kleenex to take care of all the crying you would do when you chopped those. But the cards were designed to showcase and kind of play off on the bounty of the plains and make people want to come back to places like Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Texas, and Oklahoma and raise crops and work the land. And of course, it was part of that booster movement. The companies, however, that produced these postcards, they benefited from consistent work. And one of the most successful of the manufacturers was a man named William H. Martin, who settled in Ottawa, Kansas. He took over a photographic studio in town in 1894 and began producing postcards. As a matter of fact, if you look through postcard collections in Kansas and you'll see beautiful images of downtown Ottawa, its incredible courthouse, the countryside, uh, those, many of those were produced by Martin's Postcard Company. And he decided to branch out though. And he began producing the Tall Tale postcard. He used every, he used trick photography and then he used cut and paste methods to create these composites or collages that showed you these farmers and these gigantic cucumbers and watermelons and peaches and other forms of agricultural products. He also showed fishermen catching fish that were so massive, they were larger than a boat. So he begins to produce these and the business takes off and it is a runaway success. So William made a great deal of money and eventually he sold his postcard business in Ottawa and founded the National Sign Company. So now you know more about the Tall Tale Postcard and one man who produced them in Ottawa, Kansas. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors with our wildlife segment.
In 1821, a trade route was opened from Missouri in the United States across prairies and mountains to Mexico. In 2021, we will mark 200 years of epic conflicts and grand adventures, larger than life personalities and sweeping landscapes. Join us on an historic journey. The Santa Fe Trail lives on. Find us on social media or santafetrail.org. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas, located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure, no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. Welcome back to Around Kansas. I'm Michelle Martin, your co-host. Well, I don't know about all of you, but fall is really my favorite season. I think it stems from the fact I was supposed to be an October baby, but I made my arrival a little early in July. But fall has always been my favorite time of the year. When I grew up in Michigan and when I moved to Kansas and lived in Oklahoma, I loved the change of the seasons. I liked that change in the temperature. I liked being outside at night when the air was crisp and cool and very clear. But I also um, love the changing of the leaves. I love to see the changing of the trees. But one thing that always makes me sad is to see the movement of animals and other members of the wildlife world who head south for the winter. And one of those groups that move south are of course butterflies and these monarchs behind me are one of the biggest groups that will begin migrating soon when temperatures start to drop they'll begin to head south and they actually will migrate all the way down to mexico so i will see lots of them here in arizona as they're heading south but today on our wildlife segment we're going to learn all about butterflies and pollinators while we complain endlessly about the myriad flying creatures of summer that invariably make our lives miserable, we sing the praises of the butterfly. When it flutters by and chances to land on our hand, we consider ourselves blessed. Its virtues are proclaimed in art and song and especially in popular culture, using the butterfly to sell everything from deodorant to insurance. There is even the butterfly effect, a theory that became so popular it inspired the film by the same name. The term butterfly effect, coined by Edward Lorenz, is derived from the metaphorical example of the details of a tornado, the exact time of formation, the exact path taken, being influenced by minor per perturbations, such as the flapping of the wings of a distant butterfly several weeks earlier. Lorenz discovered the effect when he observed a very small change in initial conditions had created a significantly different outcome. Perturbations, that is your word for the week, folks. So, this simple little creature, who brings us so much joy and brightens our days with its brief and unexpected visits, naturally lends itself to metaphors. The fact that it transforms from one state of being to another, its initial life as a worm, its cocoon, its emergence as something beautiful, all these stages lend themselves to encouraging people through life transitions. The good news with this inspirational bug 
is that it is literally everywhere. There are dozens of species of butterflies and moths in Kansas and lots of advice on how to attract them to your garden. There are Facebook pages and websites devoted to photos, gardening tips, and identification tools. Kids are naturally drawn to butterflies. And what kid hasn't taken a lovely lunar moth to school for science class or show and tell? Howdy. I'm Seth Hayes, and welcome to my hometown from then to now. Council Grove has a rich history as deep as the prairie tall grass. Spend the day visiting 25 historic sites or explore the unique shops and restaurants or mosey out of town along the Santa Fe Trail. You all visit my hometown, Council Grove, in the heart of the Flint Hills. Okay, looks like it's time for our tour. Welcome to the Fort Wallace Museum. Here at the museum, you're gonna find some really interesting stuff like our replica stagecoach from the Butterfield Overland Dispatch. We've got facades from the fort buildings. We've got an 1870s flag. There's a plesiosaur that was discovered locally. We've got the Ray pump organ collection. We're a little bit place with a great big story and we'd love to have you. Welcome back to Around Kansas. I'm Michelle Martin, your co-host. Deb is in North Carolina this week, uh, helping her sister Denise. We wish Denise a speedy recovery, and we can't wait for Deb to come back and have some fun on Around Kansas with us real soon. Well, on our fun segment today, I want to share some fall events that you will definitely want to take in. These will give you an opportunity to be able to learn some history, get outside, take in the fall crisp air, take in those beautiful changing colors on the trees and have some fun. So our first event is all the way down in Southeast Kansas in the community of Coffeeville. Now folks, if you know your Western history, you know what Coffeeville is known for. On October 5th, 1892, the Dalton gang rode into town. By the way, uh, the Dalton boys, Coffeeville was their hometown. And they should have known better than to go ahead and put on fake mustaches and beards and try to rob two banks in one day in their own hometown. Really, they didn't think people would recognize them and their horses? Well, we, if you know your history, you know what happened. They went down in a blaze of bullets and glory. So in Coffeeville on October 1st and 2nd, the Dalton Defender Days will celebrate the town's uprising against the Dalton gang. They have reenactments of the gunfight that took place between the Defenders and the Daltons. Uh, they normally do that right out in front of the Condon National Bank, which is beautiful and lovingly restored. If you have not been to Coffeeville to see the Condon, you must. Uh, but the bank um, is there. And it is one of the two they attempted to rob before the citizens of Coffeeville armed themselves and began to defend their community. And of course, the Daltons had ended up running down what is now known as Death Alley, where they met their fate before they were laid out on the board sidewalk and photographed for posterity. And as a stern warning, don't mess with Coffeeville. Uh, you can also visit the Dalton Defenders Museum in town, which is near the Condon, and I encourage you to do so. They have some fantastic displays. So Dalton Defender Days in Coffeyville, Kansas, the first weekend in October. Now we're going to take you up to Missouri, to Missouri Town 1855 for their Festival of Arts, Crafts, and Music on the 2nd and 3rd of October from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. This is a wonderful event that combines amazing living history demonstrators set up all throughout um, in the buildings and outside. You can see women uh, cooking. You can see people spinning, weaving, sewing, knitting. You can see blacksmiths working. Uh, you'll see individuals working with animals, um, hitching them up and turning, you know, plowing. All kinds of amazing living history demonstrations will be there for you 
along with a fantastic art and craft festival with food. Uh, this is one of my favorite events. I used to go to uh, the Missouri Town 1855 event with my good friends, George and Diane Bernheimer. Uh, we normally would portray the US Sanitary Commission in the West during the Civil War. Sometimes we portrayed immigrants coming uh, into Kansas territory in the 1850s. We always, were, when we were set up, we always had a wonderful time and it is a fantastic event. It gets you outdoors, it gets you moving and make sure you go inside and look at all of the historic structures that were moved to the park to save them and preserve them. It is an absolutely wonderful event. And last but not least, we're gonna come back out to Western Kansas to Oakley for the Oakley Corn Festival and the Kansas State and National Corn Husking Championship that will take place October 15th through the 17th. Now in Oakley, they will have everything from a corn cook-off, they'll have evening entertainment, and if you're a novice and want to learn how and enter the Kansas State Corn Husking Championship, they will actually have corn husking practice for you novices. And they will also have the state and national championships. This is sure to be a fantastic event. And I can't think of a better time to be in Western Kansas than October 15th through 17th for this event to see the harvest, to get together. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to go by and visit that monumental sculpture, that bronze of uh, Buffalo Bill Cody out on the plains. Those are just a few fall events that you can take in. We'll provide you with links and additional information um, on our Facebook page, on YouTube and our website. And we hope that you get out and enjoy history, fun, food and family this fall. We'll be back next week with a new show. Thanks for watching.